This screencast is about percent yield. So in this one, we're going to focus on the second part of um, limiting reactant and percent yields. All right, so to find the percent yield, you're going to use stoichiometry like we've been using all along, the three steps, where you sometimes are asked to go from grams to moles and moles to moles and moles back to grams. So three fractions again. Um, but you need to add another twist, and you're going to be using words like theoretical yield, which is the maximum amount of a product that you could make, the actual yield, which is the amount of product that's actually made, and then finding a percent yield, which is um, the ratio of the actual to the theoretical times 100. So a theoretical yield is the amount you would make if you were perfect. So in perfect conditions and perfect, um, perfectly followed rules and lab situation. And the actual yield is what is um, clearly actually made. And this is uh, not necessarily because a lab goes wrong or that the students were wrong. It's more like um, the conditions just weren't right and one never makes the right amount of uh, product. For instance, if you think about a cookie recipe, you look at the um, recipe, it might say three dozen cookies, but all along the process, maybe you're not making the cookies the same way that they're recommending or people eat the cookies or whatever. So your actual yield is usually much less than what they predict. All right, so here's the problem. We have um, a balanced equation again, and they're asking us how much KCL is produced. So we're looking at KCL is produced when 3.2 grams of KBr and 3.2 grams of Cl2 react. Now this is the same problem that we did um, prior in the limiting reactant problem. And when we did that, we discovered that the limiting reactant was KBr. You would need to either first figure out which one was a limiting reactant or know already. So if we know that the um, KBr is our limiting reactant, we're going to take the 3.2 KBr that we have in the problem, and we're going to convert it through a series of steps into um, how much KCl we can make. And then we'll take that amount, which is our theoretical amount, and we will compare it with if we get an actual yield here in a minute. So here's the work again. You have 3.2 grams of KBr, you convert it, and um, this tells you that you need, or you can make, 2.0 grams of KCl. So here is the work. Um, when you take your 3.2 grams of KBr, because remember that was our limiting reactant, we're going to convert it into grams of KCl. And in theory, we should make 2.0 grams, grams of KCl if we were perfect. And as I mentioned in the previous screen, this is our theoretical yield. And we are going to compare it with the actual amount that we make. So here is how you actually um, convert and find the percent yield. You take the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100, and then you have the percent yield. Here's the rest of the problem. It says when 3.2 grams of KBr reacts, the actual yield is 1.7 grams of KCl. What is the percent yield? So to do this problem, we are going to compare our theoretical, which we found was um, 2.0, and our actual which is the 1.7, and then we'll multiply that by 100 to find our percent yield. So here it is all nice and neatly typed, and you can see that you get 85% yield for that problem. All right, so this is your homework. I would like you to submit this into Schoology for percent yield. Um, it doesn't matter if you write it out or um, type it up, but you need to show work. Uh, so here is your balanced equation, and I would like you to take the 12.0 grams of NH3 that makes 1.87 grams of H2 and calculate the percent yield. Keep in mind that it you need to, to find percent yield, you need to start with the, um, the reactant in order to find the percent yield. So pick which one of these two substances is the reactant and convert it into the other one and then calculate the percent yield.